Good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time of day it is to you all from All Things Mysterious. Before we get started on our episode today, we thought it would be nice to say hello to all of our listeners from across the world. It's unbelievable, but we have listeners in Australia, Canada, South Africa, the UK, Latvia, Romania, and of course, our amazing friends in the Philippines that made us international when we very first released, which is pretty much the coolest thing that has ever happened to both me and Matt, like ever in our entire lives. Um, So if you guys across the world, especially if uh, you guys have cases or ideas of stuff for us to cover, please follow us on social media and send us a message. We would love to hear from you and cover more international stuff. If it is your first time listening, welcome. We're a little weird, but we're fun. I'm Jordan. I'm Matt. And today I've got a really mysterious true crime case for you. And for once, it's not a missing persons case. Still probably going to piss me off. Oh, this one's really going to piss you off for sure. Because no, this case supposedly is solved. But for all of us who like myself and most of you listening like a good mystery or a good puzzle to solve, the conclusion of this case just does not make sense at all. At least not to me or most people who follow true crime (laughs) at all. So in the end, we will let you decide. So today, I'm going to tell you all about the mysterious death of Ellen Ray Greenberg. So Ellen was 27 at the time of her death. Um, She lived in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. By the way, I'm sorry if I don't sound great today. Um, Not feeling great, but you know what? We're going to we're going to power through it. So she was reportedly um, a really happy, bubbly person, and she was a first grade teacher. So I'm going to kind of set up the scene here. It's probably um, the worst job in the world. Oh, God, I couldn't do it. Look, I love my kids, but having a room full of kids, first graders. Yeah, listen, like we're recording this the day after Thanksgiving, and I spent the day with my nephew yesterday. He's eight months, and... That was enough for me. Like, he's the happiest baby, but I couldn't do it, okay? I couldn't, I couldn't do it. You've got two girls, but like, that's, I, no, no. It takes such a special person to do that. Special crazy person, maybe. Yeah, no, I have such (laughs) respect for teachers, especially the younger ages, because like, no, I would lose my mind. Anyway, sorry. Off topic. (laughs) Anywho, she was engaged to Samuel Goldberg. He was 28 years old. Um, On the day of her death, which was January 26th, 2011, um, it was a pretty normal day. She went to work, um, and the school system shut down early due to basically a blizzard. Um, So she was sent home early. They dismissed early. As far as um, friends, family, and anyone else knows, her relationship with Samuel was really solid. So everyone that she talked to said they were a really happy couple. Um, There was no issues. She was really excited about the wedding. They were sending save the date cards, et cetera, et cetera. Like she was all in on the wedding. Um, However, she was seeing a doctor and a psychiatrist because she was having some anxiety issues. Um, Relatable. Relatable. I can only imagine that being a first grade teacher would give you that because, I mean, that's that's a lot to take on, especially planning a wedding at the same time. Like, that's a lot. Anyway, she was prescribed Xanax, Ambien, and Clonopin, which are all... Uh, Ambien is a sleep medication, um, but Xanax and Clonopin are just anti-anxiety medications, and they're pretty common. Um, but everyone said, even her psychiatrist said, that she never had any suicidal tendencies, so that's really important to note. Again, we've talked about this before. I don't, I don't put much stock in that when people say they didn't have suicidal tendencies. 
I know, I know. But I always want to throw it out there that everyone said that she didn't because her psychiatrist, which is, you know, a therapist, basically, her psychiatrist was even quoted as saying she starts thinking about everything else, not suicide. Which I get because, frankly, um, not to be like TMI, but I get that way. Like when my anxiety and depression start rearing up, like I've never gone the suicide like train of thought. I just go every other route like I don't know my brain just goes into overdrive and I go into every other train of thought I go into every train of thought that doesn't surprise me that that does not surprise me at all with you (laughs) I mean everybody says that I'm a nice guy I don't I know you're horrible because you know me (laughs) you're freaking annoying man I love you but you're annoying as crap (laughs) only to you Especially to me. That's why that's why we're so good on the podcast. Eh, that's what you guys like. <laughs> All of you. Especially when you bring up ghost hunting. Jesus. Y'all went feral. <laughs> Speaking of that, everybody that knows Jordan, make sure to remind her that we're going ghost hunting. Oh, we're not doing it. Anywho, back back to the case. All right. So that that day, Ellen came home from work. Uh, we know that Samuel was home with Ellen. Um, he went to the gym inside their apartment complex about 445. About half an hour later, um, he tried getting back into the apartment, but found it locked from the inside, which is really odd. So he did have a key, but he found it locked from the inside with one of those like um, it's called a swing bar lock, like a hotel lock. Um who has those in their house? It's an apartment complex. Who has those in an apartment? Uh, apparently they do. I don't know if that's a thing in, in bigger cities. I know around here we don't, but apparently it's pretty standard, at least in that apartment complex. So Suspicious. No, it is. Okay, so yeah, there's all sorts of suspicious weird crap in this case, and we are not even close to where we're at here. So here's where it gets real weird. So he got super angry and started texting and calling her. And his texts, in my opinion, are sketchy as fuck. Okay, so I'm going to read some of the text messages. We don't, I don't think this is all of them, but these are the ones that have been released. So they are as follows. Hello? Open the door. What are you doing? I'm getting pissed. Hello? You better have an excuse. What the fuck? Ah, You have no idea. So, in my opinion, that's not a very stable person. In my professional opinion. To be fair, and to pay devil's advocate here, I've been locked out of my house before. I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong, I have too, but like... And my girlfriend at the time, she was just listening to music. I'm texting her to open the door (laughs) and she's just not paying attention to my messages. So I kind of get where he's coming from on this. I mean, I get it, but like, wow, just, okay. I'm sorry. I've dated some angry people before. And like, for me, that just goes to a red flag. Like that's just my professional opinion. That just goes straight to red flag territory. Like, wow, you're just going to go immediately angry. I don't know. I personally don't like it. So I still don't see anything wrong with it. I mean, how long have they, were they dating for? Three years. That's kind of out of the honeymoon phase. So, I mean, it is, but like they're, just, in, they're in the you're annoying phase. So maybe it's maybe it's just because of more of what I know. But I'll I'll reveal more as we get into the episode. Right. Still no red flags over here. OK, that's fair. By the way, I do apologize if this episode's kind of all over the place. I'm not mentally put together today. And I'm sorry. I mean, so I'm, in other words, just like every other day. I'm not mentally put together on my best days. And so today is not that great anyway. But you know what? We're going to get through it. So at that point, Sam went downstairs to see if the security guard could open the door, which, frankly, I don't know what the security guard could do for a swing bar lock, but OK. I'm, I guess he thought maybe he could. I don't know um, which the security guard could not. Um, And they both went back upstairs to see what they could do. And Samuel decided to just ram the door open himself and get in. 
which you know what fair i get it he's been locked out for like half an hour at this point he's super upset and he's starting to get worried so he just rams the door open and gets inside red flag i don't think that's actually a red flag no not that part what the the fact that he went down to the security guard yeah no i actually do have to agree with that I do. It's um, almost like he's trying to set up an alibi. That's exactly my thoughts. Like he's building himself an alibi. He's like, no, I'm going to make sure somebody witnesses me do this. I agree. I have more questions about the scene, but we'll get into that later. Oh, I'm about to build the scene for you because uh, I want to see it. I, I will build you a replica and I'll attempt to describe it. But anywho, here's where it gets even weirder. When he got inside, he found Ellen in their kitchen on the floor with a knife in her chest. He called 911, but he couldn't do chest compressions, obviously because of the knife in her chest. Like, that's going to make things so much worse. Um, according to the 911 call, he did try for a second to do chest compressions, and then he was like, oh, crap, there's a knife in your chest. I can't do that. And it, the 911 call is a whole disaster. It's... It's a disaster. You can find it online if you want to search it, but it's just a, it's a mess. It's a complete mess. Um, when EMS got there, it was about 6.40 p.m. She was pronounced dead. Here's where it gets even crazier. Ellen had been stabbed 20 times. 10 times in the chest and stomach and 10 times in the back of her head and her neck with a knife from her own kitchen. She was sitting on the floor upright against the cabinets, obviously with a knife still in her chest, and she had a white towel in her hand, and the white towel, like the kitchen towel, um, it did not have blood on it at all. Zero. No blood. You would think with that amount of, like, crazy stab wounds... You would have some sort of blood. I don't know. I thought I found that really odd. So obviously medical examiner, all that was called. Here's where it gets even weirder. Some of the wounds were so shallow. They were almost scratches. Some of them were four inches deep. See, that actually makes sense to me, though. Because if you're stabbing yourself... You're going to have hesitation marks and hesitation. That's exactly what they were thinking. They were thinking, okay, well, maybe it was a suicide and she was hesitating. But here's why I'm confused. Because why in the world, if you were going to commit suicide, would you stab yourself in the back of your head and your neck? Like, that is the most awkward way. I'm sorry, not to be like way over the top here. But, like, if I'm going to go out, that is not the way I'm going to choose to go. I'm not going to stab myself 20 freaking times, especially trying to go for the back of my head and neck. I mean, if you could pierce the skull, I mean, it'd be the fastest way. Yeah, but like 20 times, that's so many. You got to be in so much pain at that point. Like, that cannot be comfortable. That cannot be... No. Like, I, I'm sorry. I just don't... I, personally, I don't believe it. I just don't think... I don't know. It just... To me, it doesn't make sense. And there's more stuff coming up that still doesn't make sense. So... Well, I already have several questions, so... Yeah, I'm sure that you do. Because, trust me, this one just... There's more sen- There's more questions that come up in this one. This is one of those cases that you just find more questions and more questions and more questions and it just makes you crazy so originally the medical examiner ruled it a homicide but due to the lack of defense wounds no evidence of a break-in aside from the fact that samuel um obviously had to break the door in himself um there was no dna on the knife except for ellen's and they did check um samuel's like key card and make sure that like he went to the gym and all that fun stuff. They checked that. And after doing that, they were like, nope, suicide. So they convinced the medical examiner to rule it a suicide, which personally I don't care for. That's not how it works. 
I feel like. Yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. Because uh, although the medical examiner and the police work together, they aren't really influenced by each other. In my personal opinion, it is the medical examiner's job to look strictly at the physical evidence on the body and determine what happened and not to let the police determine what happened because of other circumstantial evidence. So, I mean, who, who's saying that the police influenced the medical examiner? The medical examiner himself. He admitted to it. So he's admitted to not doing his job? Yep, he sure did. Hmm. He admitted to it. Wild. I told you this case is so weird, one man. Yeah, I kind of. I'm already. On, I'm kind of got my mind made up. So you gotta give me some evidence to show me something else. Well, obviously at this point, um, Ellen's parents were really, really unhappy about this because they were like, "There is no way. There's no way." But they did say that Ellen had been a little bit different lately. She'd been really stressed out. She'd not has uh, she'd been not quite as easygoing, but she wouldn't say exactly what was going on. She's kind of blamed it on work and wedding planning, which, to be fair, that's that's a lot. She's a kindergarten or kindergarten. She's a first grade teacher and she's planning a wedding. And like I personally have not planned a wedding, but I watched my sister do it and she was about ready to pull her hair out. So. Yeah, but I mean, that's fair. They're talking about a, per, a full personality change. Not full, it, just a little bit off. I mean, that's still a red flag as far as suicide goes. It is a little bit. So they bought the outcome, they petitioned it, and they got all of the autopsy reports. They hired a private attorney and another medical examiner of their own to see, obviously, if they could change it and at least get it back to unknown, not necessarily. Um, one or the other, but at the very least unknown, because I'm sorry, but it just really bothers me because like, I just can't see and I can't explain it. But like, if you, you guys can Google it if you want, but the angle of the stab wounds don't make sense in the back of your head. The angle of the stab wounds don't make sense. The angle of the knife doesn't make sense because the knife blade was facing down. And if you are reaching behind your head, with a knife in your hand, I feel like the knife blade would be sh- pull- facing up. Depends on how you hold the I knife. I mean, it, it does depend on how you're holding the knife, but like, to me, it doesn't make sense. Another thing, and this, we'll get into more of this a little bit later. Um, so I'm kind of letting this go a little bit early, but Ellen was left handed and the knife was found in her right hand. Okay, as a left-handed person... (laughs) Here we go. (laughs) I use my right hand for a lot of stuff. That's fair. Uh, Gotta be very careful. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I mean, I get it, though, because, like, I'm right-handed, but I bowl left-handed. Yeah, and I'm... I have better aim left-handed when I'm bowling for some weird reason. I bowl with my right hand. I Most sports, I throw football with my right hand. Well, I can actually throw football with both hands, but... You can uh, throw a football? Mm-hmm. I'm so proud of you. And <laughs> baseball, I pitch with my right. Interesting. Although I mean, I, I can, can kind of understand that. So, I mean, it, to me, that doesn't really necessarily... Because, I mean, I, I have a feeling if I was going to stab someone, it won't really matter which hand I use. Uh, and, I, I mean, often, like, I, I carry a pocket knife with me wherever I go. Yeah, I <laughs> usually carry one on me. Sometimes it's in my left pocket. Sometimes it's in my right pocket. Kind of just changes Fair. day by day. So, the fact that doesn't really, like, I, I hate when they do this. Like, I see this on, like, TV shows a lot where they'll be like, That person was right-handed, but the gun was in their left hand. It must have been a setup. I mean, that's just not reality. It makes sense. Because like I said, I mean, obviously you are left-handed, which Mm -hmm. I actually don't think I realized until you said that. Now I'm going to think about it. (laughs) But anyway, I I am a right-handed person, but I do bowl left-handed. I don't have nearly as much power left-handed because my left arm 
is super wimpy, but I aim better left-handed because my left eye is my better eye right. and I, I have better aim that direction. But yeah, I can, I mean, I'm because when I was younger, I broke my left elbow. So it was in a cast for like six months. Hmm. Um, I don't think it was six months, but it felt like six months. Probably did. But I, so the whole time I had to use my right hand to like hand, you know, write and stuff. Uh, and plus, don't forget, you know, even back when I, even though, you know, I'm not that old. Uh, yeah, you are. <laughs> don't lie. They kind of frowned upon left-handed people in they school. They did. Uh, they did. She was 27 and this was in like 2011, I think. So. Yeah. So she would have been older than me. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean. It. it <sighs> Left-handed people really get the bad rap, and mm -hmm. I mean, and I mean, nothing's really built that way for left-handed people. Oh, don't even get me started on any of that. Yeah, I, I can only imagine. Uh, but so, anyway, we we live in a right-handed society, so you got to adapt. So the fact that this she's left-handed and the knife is found in her right hand does absolutely nothing to change my mind. Okay, well, there's one more piece of evidence that I'm going to let slip later that just has me rather bamboozled but I'm not telling you that until the end because it just really bamboozles me you want to see where my mind goes oh god no not really but you're going to tell me anyway I am I'm thinking of jelly beans now why in the world are you thinking of jelly beans <laughs> bamboozled oh god <laughs> why I don't know I don't know why my mind's like this lord <laughs> That's a good word though I like that word. Good jelly beans, too. So anyway, once they presented all this to the judge, the judge was like, no way. It's definitely suicide. They're like, all right. Well, they found yet another investigator. So here's the thing. Um, I'm not going to lie to you guys. When I was researching this, I was trying to put names to all these. But the, the paper trail on this confused me to the point where I could not because they had so many investigators on this case that I could not figure out which investigator did what okay it confused the living crap out of me so i knew that like the third investigator on this is the one that figured out all this but i couldn't figure out which investigator it was so just bear with me here because it was a lot Can you say investigator one more time investigator <laughs> i'll say it for the 82nd time i don't care because it confuses me anyway here is that lovely piece of evidence that just Wow. So he took another look at all of the autopsy photos, all of everything else. Um, they realized that one, most of the stab wounds did not hemorrhage. There was not any blood actually coming out of those. So she pretty much was dead before she hit the floor. Number two, there was a trail of blood on her cheek. This is the one. There was a trail of blood on her cheek that no one had pointed out that ran horizontally. If you'll remember, Ellen was sitting up vertically when they found her. So this ran horizontally. So if she killed herself, if she committed suicide, why would there be blood that ran horizontally on her cheek? So let's say hypothetically, she's trying to stab herself. Um, and she stabs herself and she lays down on the floor waiting to die. Then she realizes that she's not dying. So then she gets back up, takes a knife, stabs herself in the chest and props her, you know, leans back on the thing. See, that's easy. There's more. <laughs> he also looked into whether any of the stab wounds would have cut her spinal cord. And it would have. One of them cut her spinal cord, which means she would not have been able to inflict those herself. Mm. However, I'm going to give you something that you are going to find good for your part of the case. Because he did look into the suicide um, What's the word I'm looking for? I'm stuck. Suicide. I don't know. Angle. Yeah, angle. Thank you. I'm stuck. Anyway, 
They did do a search of her computer and her phone whenever they originally investigated, but they didn't apparently do it very deep. Because when this investigator looked in, he found searches in her search history for methods of painless suicide. I wouldn't say this is painless, though. I mean, maybe if you ended up cutting your spinal cord, maybe, but that's... I would not think that any part of that is painless. So, okay, so this is an investigator, right? Yes. And who found out that the spinal cord was cut? Uh, One of his medical examiners that he hired. So is it possible that that spinal cord was cut during the autopsy, the first autopsy? I don't think so because they used photos. But, I mean, they still would have had to, you know, maybe cut into it to see the how deep the wounds were. It's, it's possible. I'm not going to say it's not. Just like suicide, I, it's definitely possible. I don't think it's super likely in so my personal on, opinion. The second medical but, example didn't even look at the body. They just looked at photos. I think so. so I'm not how, entirely how can sure. They tell that the spinal cord was cut. Photos. And I, I even looked at the photos. I know that sounds horrible and gross and gory, but I did. Um, so they had a photo of the skin cut off from the spinal cord. Like in there. Or are they just just based on where the wound was? That- based on more or less where the wound was. Okay, see, so that doesn't... Now, they did, obviously, they got in there and based on the original medical examiner's report, because he, he did do a really good job and he believed originally it was homicide. And then the police were like, Nah, bro. No. No. <sighs> See, the, the, I don't know. Like, because <sighs> there's there's more coming, but okay. Well, I know, but this I can't get over this part real quick. <laughs> because. I broke him, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet, but it, it just, I don't, I don't like this because I'm very logical and analytical as far as this stuff goes. And. How can you sit there and say from a photo yeah. that her spinal cord is cut? That's like that's like me looking at a photo online and saying, yep, that person was killed with a gunshot without you know, actually seeing anything. I mean, I am not good at that, so I could not tell you. Because for one, let's say, you know, let's say there was a knife wound yeah. where her spinal and cord. I could be horribly wrong. Um I'm not going to lie to you. I did not do nearly as good of research on this as I probably should have. You don't admit that. (laughs) No, it's fine. I don't care. I will admit it because I'm not feeling great today. Um, And I wasn't feeling the best when I was researching this. But he and and it. Listen, the case files on this are so confusing. There's like four million of them to go through. I just literally like four million. Okay. Okay. There's so many subpoenas. There's so many. Oh, my God. There's just so many to go through. And there's. Oh, my God. There's eight million of them. And they're so confusing trying to dig through and figure out which one that I needed was beyond confusing. OK. I just, OK. Yeah. And I, I get that. And I just. <laughs> I, I, was I'm really hyper, confusing. I'm hyper fixated on this because I know you are. I can hear it. Because if this is evidence that it is a homicide, it's not very good evidence in my eyes. Just because, one, from a picture, you cannot see how deep that wound was. You cannot see how deep the knife went in. That's fair. Uh, and then you got to think about bone deflection because as soon as well, you go and in. I think there were scans and stuff as well. Well, but even with scans and stuff, I mean, you're still not going to be able to. I mean, the only way to really tell is by. No, I mean, like MRIs and CAT scans. You can see that. I I don't think you'd be able to see that. I think you can. Because, I mean, MRIs. (laughs) You can see that. That's how you. That's literally how you see it. Well, but you can't. I don't think you get. I don't know. I've never had a head MRI, which I probably should have. Oh, I've had. Plenty with my neurological stuff. You can see all why, of why that. Why would they give an MRI to a dead body, though? It brings up a whole other set of questions. I don't know. Listen, it's beyond me. Anywho, there's more stuff, Matthew, so that you don't keep getting caught up. Because there's okay. more things that have come out about Samuel. Mr. Samuel. 
Now, I'm not saying he did it. Okay. However, something I found super odd. You know how he went to the gym that day? Mm Mm-hmm. First of all, he was wearing Timberland boots to go to the gym. I find that really odd, personally. I've done it. That's really odd. (laughs) But you know what? You're weird. So whatever floats your boat. Number two, the security guard. His name's Phil. He swears up and down. He did not actually go upstairs that day. He stayed downstairs. He did not actually go. That was one of my questions. Nope. He swears up and down. He just stayed downstairs. He did not go back upstairs with him. I have not gotten a report from EMS to see if he was actually there or not. I could not tell. I mean, if he's a security guard, he's not a very good security guard at that point then. Accurate. Um, And I mean, I'm pretty sure the cops interviewed him at the beginning. Yeah. Because I mean, obviously, first suspect is always going to be the boyfriend, husband. Oh, yeah. Always the spouse. Always. Um, So my guess is they probably would have, you know, picked apart his story and tried to Mm -hmm. discredit any way they could. So the fact that later on he's coming out and saying that he was never there, a little sus to me. Oh, it's very sus because this investigator dude, he also found out that Sam called two members of his family before he called 911. When Ellen was just lying there, dead. I mean, again. Like, dude, come on. When you're panicking, I mean... (sighs) I, I don't find that, you know, because you want to find somebody like if you just don't know what to do. And as odd as that sounds in that kind of situation, it's very common for you to basically freeze up and forget what to do. Um, and, you know, I've got stories where I could tell you that show that, but I've told enough stories today. You've told so many stories. <laughs> But my point is, is that so many stories today that is odd, but it's not, I don't think it's criminal in any way. Like, I don't think he, you know, it doesn't prove that he was killed or anything. I don't think. Do you want to know the the final bit of information that kind of blew my mind? The only damage to the door that he broke down or whatever was a missing screw. The lock was just undone. There was a screw missing. Is that in the original police evidence photos? With photos. Okay. So I know for a fact um, those locks that you're talking about that mm-hmm. are in hotels and stuff. Those locks that are on hotels and stuff are very, very like crappy. Uh There's a reason why nobody uses them as true security devices. Yeah. And it's funny because I was listening to um, a couple podcasts about it just to see what other people's reactions were to it. And everyone was like, there's no way you can get into those. And I was like, listen, I can YouTube this right now and find a way in without a single doubt. And I YouTubed it and it was like, hey, look, look at all of these ways to get into one of these locks. And I was like, hmm, how about that? And now my YouTube search history is real weird. (laughs) But anyway, I mean, and. (laughs) There's, without knowing more, like, I mean, the the lock could have been old. It could have been, mm-hmm. you know, the freaking boards that it was attached to could have been, you know, I not for, for, uh, totally just forgot the word I'm trying to use. Could be rotten out. Um, well, yeah, and I mean, it looked just in the picture that I saw, like, the apartment looked really well maintained. The, the wood looked good. The lock itself looked nice and new and it just looked like the screw had been either taken out or had fallen out or something. I mean, the lock itself did not look messed with one little bit. This usually have the uh, talking about the connector that's on the like door frame, right? Yes. So those usually have two, two screws. Mm -hmm. So let's say that he did, you know, hit the door multiple times. Let's say, you know, obviously He's not going to break it open with one hit. No, no, there's uh, no way. I'm sorry. Kind that's kind of in movies. That, I was going to say, that's like a TV yeah. show kind of thing. Uh, so let's say he hit it a few times and it knocked one of the screws out. Yep. And then the next hit, you know, it basically isn't attached anymore. It's just going to float there. Yep. Uh, so to me, that's not really 
without more evidence, that's not really. I would expect to see some sort of visible evidence to the wood of the door on. um, What do you call it? The The molding. Yeah, the molding. Thank you. Or trim. Or the trim. I and there was no damage to the trim. You could see it was pretty freshly painted. The paint was all still intact. But we don't know like how the wood was. I mean, it could have been run out where it just wasn't even hardly attached anymore. Just I mean, I know, but like you could see in the paint that the paint was all still together is what I'm saying. Well, yeah, but I mean, let's say, let's say, you know, they drilled a hole in through the trim into the actual frame of the door. Okay. Uh, and then they screwed the, you know, screwed it in. If it got pulled out of the door frame, that wouldn't necessarily cause damage to the trim itself. Okay, that's fair. And it would actually hide the damage on the inside. So, I mean, now if they had a picture of the trim taken off and where the screw was, you know, that would be one thing. But Yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not buying it personally. And again, another, another nail in the coffin for this one is Unless the cops are incompetent, which, as we've seen in previous episodes, is very much possible. Uh, Welch, Oklahoma Police State <laughs> uh, Police Department. But these cops aren't really screaming to me that they're incompetent. I mean... No, they did a fairly decent job. I'm not going to say that they overturned every possible stone, but they did a decent job. Because, honestly, they... I mean, as we've seen, cops are more likely to blame something on murder than suicide anyways. So that's always going to be their go-to is it's going to be murder first. What gets me is like, there was no suicide note. There was, I don't know. It just does not scream suicide to me. I mean, I'm not necessarily going for the suicide angle, but I'm also not really on the, I'm not on the murder, you know, not saying that it's murder either. I just think there's not enough evidence either way. And and now there could be evidence that I just don't know about. Well, of course, there's always some sort of evidence Um, that they hide, you know, um, they call it like guilt evidence or or something like that, where the guilty party is the only person who knows about it. However, they seem to think it's a suicide. So if that's the case, what are we, you know, what evidence is there really going to be of that? But so here's, you know, because I'm. 99% 99% sure at the initial start of the investigation, he would have been put under a microscope. Probably so. And he's managed to stay pretty well out of any sort of press or anything like yeah. that. He was never officially um, a suspect or, or anything like that. So somehow he managed to be completely out. Like from what I have been told, I didn't research him myself. He's been uh, married, got a good, happy life. Everything seems hunky dory. So if and, he's an issue, apparently he's off the radar. So yeah. and I mean if he was like, you know, someone capable of murdering their ex, there would be or you know, his not ex. You would but, think that there would be signs. Yeah, and there would be, you know, exes who would have came forward. You would think so. Um so I just not not saying I'm defending this guy because I don't know. No, I have um, to agree because like her her parents really liked him. And I I'm just, just saying parents usually have some sort of clue. But let, let's say that it is murder. Let's go down this rabbit hole for a second. Um, Ooh, Matt's going down a rabbit hole, you guys. Hold on. And let's say it wasn't their <laughs> boyfriend, fiance or whatever. See, that's what I'm leaning towards, in my opinion. I think it was someone completely, if it was... I don't necessarily think it was him because we've got the the evidence that he was pretty for sure in the gym. We know his key card was down there for sure. And I mean, yeah, he was wearing boots to the gym. I just think that's real weird, but he was down in the gym. I mean, yeah. And I was thinking like probably I know I've seen people who are in like the army or um, other um, services who work out in their boots and stuff like that Mm -hmm. to train. And that's not the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. I do think it's kind of weird, but you know, maybe he's just weird. I don't know. That's just me. Maybe he can find afford ankle weights. I mean, whatever. (laughs) That's just me. But 
um, they did look at like I think they looked at like her fire escape and there were no footprints or anything in the snow. And they looked at security cameras and they didn't find anybody going in and out. It's just really bizarre to me. Yeah, cause, I mean, that you would think that the first thing they would do is check if there's any other signs of oh, force of entry. So the fact that there isn't, and obviously the fact that the door it was supposedly locked from the inside, which at this point, I don't really doubt that. Um, because if if that was the case, if it wasn't true, I mean, that would have been, the cops would have hyper fixated on that. I just think it's, the whole thing's just odd. Uh, but at the same time, if Samuel is the one to break in, I don't know how you can necessarily prove it. What? Prove that he broke in? Prove that it wasn't. Well, I mean, that's why I think the, the security guard was up there. Yeah, it's possible. Uh, I guess you could look at cameras. Yeah. I don't know necessarily if they've got camera footage. They haven't released any of it. But, I mean, there's obviously something there for the cops to, you know, eliminate him as a suspect. Yeah. Uh, and this guard coming back later saying that he wasn't up there just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I'm pretty sure the cops would have interviewed him probably first. And, you know, so unless he lied in the initial investigation... I think he's just probably trying to capitalize on the. The whole thing is just really, really odd to me. Like the entire thing is just the most bizarre thing. The entire, all of it, all of it is just really, really weird. And um, I don't know the whole thing. Like they, they looked at her blood. The only medication she had was the correct doses of the correct medication she had. So it wasn't like she OD'd and did something crazy. Like everything was as it should have been aside from, you know, the 20 stab wounds. And I mean, so going back to, you know, what I originally said was, I mean, her parents did notice a change in her, regardless of how small it was. There was a change. I agree. Which, As much as I hate to say it is, you know, obviously pretty, pretty damning for the suicide theory, just because there's a change in her behavior and her personality, regardless of how small it is. The fact that other people can notice it is enough of a change that, you know, for there to be an issue. I agree. My personal thought on that, though is that she also at some point had searched for painless suicide. If she was going to go through that route, she had medications that she probably could OD on that would have gone a lot easier than this route. I mean, yeah, I mean, and it's kind of, a you know, I just think think that if she was going to, why this way? I mean, that that's a good question. And that's what makes this case the strangest to me is, you know, let's say it is suicide. Why this way? I mean, if you're going to use a knife, you know, slit your wrist. Yep. Uh, now, I kind of got a crazy theory. All right. Let's hear it. Let's say she was hallucinating. Oh, that's interesting. Let's say she felt like something was crawling inside her skin. I mean, I feel like none of those things cause it, but, you know, maybe she she had something else going deeper. The psychiatrist had no records of anything like that, but maybe she wasn't saying anything about it. Maybe she stayed awake for three days and... I mean, listen, I've been there. It's not a pleasant time. I mean, hallucination, especially with locked sleep, is not uncommon, but let's just say she felt like something was crawling inside her skin. Yeah. Most of the hesitation marks were on her um, chest and like stomach and abdomen. From what I understand, they weren't necessarily on like the back of her head and her neck. But I could be horribly wrong here. It's just I don't know. The whole thing is just the most bizarre thing. And I I wanted to do this case because it just. 
It just irks me because I can't make any of the puzzle pieces fit. Sometimes you just got to cut corners and force the yeah. pieces together. I know. I know. No, but I mean, obviously, there's nothing here that's going to make me go one way or the other. Like, I don't feel confident saying that it was murder and I don't feel confident saying that it was suicide. That's how I feel about it, too, because there's not enough evidence to point to either, which is personally why I feel like they should have ruled it unknown. Uh, but on the same same page, like, I don't feel like these cops were incompetent. I don't feel like they were not doing their job. At least nothing that you said, you know, points to that direction. No, I agree. I mean, they ran the tests. They yeah. did. They looked at the evidence. They did their job. I'm not saying that they, they didn't because they no. obviously did. Like, there's plenty of, of evidence that they looked at. So for that, I mean, for that reason... I'm more inclined to say that it was suicide just because it was something. Oh, I mean, obviously she's dead. Yeah. I mean, it's just the most bizarre case that just nags at me in the back of my soul. This is one of the cases that when we started this podcast, I was dying to cover. Um, This is one of the cases that I wanted to wait until we'd done a few to cover because I wanted to make sure and do it some justice because it just, it just, gets me because like oh i just want to know i just want to know there's there's one more case that i'm i'm waiting to do until i've got plenty because it (laughs) listen you guys i'm obsessed with it and like not this one i'm not even gonna tell you which one it is because i have this case memorized inside and out and in between and all of the other things because it drives me insane i'm gonna find out what it is so i can do it before you i will (laughs) murder you and then I will cover it on the podcast (laughs) once I figure out how to record the tech stuff and figure that out but anyway Uh, I'm I'm not worried about that because you'd never be able to I would never never be able to figure it out (laughs) Uh, but no um, I will tell you it's a missing persons case but it just we're gonna get you out of your comfort zone and have you do some more supernatural stuff I have a supernatural case for next week that's what you keep saying. I do, though. I even told you what it is. I just I was going to try and do it for this week, and then I got sick. <laughs> I'm sure you probably told me, but I don't remember at all. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. It's fine. You forget everything I say. Yeah. It's fine. Oh. I don't matter to you. On anyway. that note. <laughs> anyway, as of now, her death is still considered a suicide. Uh, her parents are obviously still fighting the system um, to have it changed, at the very least unknown. Um, which honestly, I, I think is unknown is is what it really is, in my opinion, is unknown. I mean, because we don't know and there's not evidence to point to either way. I, I think obviously with no forced entry. And, you know, I'm pretty sure they look thoroughly in that. I believe it. And l- let's just say, and this is giving them a lot of credit, especially after some of the cops we talked about. But let's say Breaking that they, accurate. They went through every single option. Mm-hmm. They checked for force entry, uh, did a thorough investigation of the scene, you know, talked to witnesses. And I'm sure they talked to, you know, exes of his and, you know, family of his. And I'm sure they probably friends. did. Friends. Um, so let's say they did all that and they ruled him as a suspect. They ruled, you know, breaking in as, mm-hmm. you know, so unless you're going to get into supernatural. Which would be actually kind of cool. It would be kind of neat. Uh, I mean, you're left with suicide. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the last available option you've got. It's obviously not, you know, not a, a natural death. No. So, no, there's definitely nothing nothing natural about that one. So under the assumption that they did, they investigated it thoroughly, which I, the, granted, that's given them a lot of credit. Yeah. Uh, I don't know anything about it. I don't even remember where this case took place at, to be honest. Philadelphia, (laughs) Pennsylvania. You're welcome. I mean. (sighs) But I think they did a good job on it. I just, it's just a really bizarre case. Just really, really bizarre. I just think unless something comes up or like they actually get physical evidence, I just don't see why they would change it from suicide or even to unknown because. I can understand that. I mean, like I said, this is a case that just. There's no, there's nothing that makes a lot of sense about it. There's not a single thing that makes sense. Because usually the unknown cause is when there's like a possibility that it could be murder, 
could be suicide, could be natural causes. That's usually what unknown is. Well, it's for. definitely not natural, but there is a beautiful little in between here where it could be one or the other, and we just can't figure it out. We don't know. There's not I mean, enough evidence either way. I mean, yes, it could be suicide, but like at the same time, if she cut her own spinal cord or if somebody cut her own spinal cord, how could she have done it the rest allegedly. of the way? Allegedly, yes. But either way, <laughs> but, how could that have possibly worked? I mean, that's taken, like, I'm still. That whole cutting her spinal cord thing. I know. I, I know you I'll don't have like to look it. more into that because that's a little sus to me. Uh, everything I say is <laughs> sus to you. Not everything. Pretty much everything. But you you eliminate you know foul play or eliminate murder, then you know obviously not natural, so that's eliminated. Fair. I mean, you're left with suicide. It's and something. So, to me, uh, you know, I get that they want to change it to unknown maybe investigate more yeah but unless i see evidence that they just didn't investigate properly or you know there's questions on that which so far nothing that you said shows that anybody's question in their investigation no and i don't think that they are i i really don't think that they are i think they just believe that well, and uh, as a parent yeah. i i get that they want them to keep investigating yeah. they want answers and I can understand that because it's just weird. But, but as an outside party to it and just reading about it, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, it to me, they're only left with the suicide option. Yeah. No, it, it makes sense. I get it. It's the, it's kind of like in the, the medical terminology when you've looked at all the horses, all you're left with is a zebra. Like mm-hmm. that's, that's kind of what you've got left. Like that's all you've got. So it's, I, I get it. Um, I don't love it, but this is kind of what they were left with. And as horrible as I I don't like it, this is kind of the option that they were left with. Mm -hmm. But I'm still not buying it personally, just because (laughs) like, and I'll have Matt look at it when he, uh, when we're done with this lovely little episode, just the angles of the stab wounds, in my opinion, don't make sense. I mean, he made a good point. Like it depends on how you're stabbing the knife and holding it and everything. But personally, to me, it does not make sense. Anywho, mm-hmm. anywho, it's still, I, I I think this case, at least right now with all the evidence that you presented, I think they did the right thing by calling it a suicide just because there's nothing really that, and I mean, the whole spinal cord thing, like I said, I'd have to look more into that just because yeah, it just boggles my mind that they somehow looked at a picture. And well, I mean, and you've. You've seen MRI scans and stuff before, haven't you? Well, you can basically see a slice of the body. Yeah, but that uh, that's It's assuming. easier than like cutting the body in half to see it. Well, I know, but you said that you didn't know. You thought it was an MRI. I think so. I don't know. Listen, I don't feel good today. <laughs> Y'all can hear it in my voice. I'm doing the best I can here. I'm drinking an energy drink just to do this. Like we're making it though. It's fine. But and that, that's the other thing is like eliminating suicide doesn't necessarily bring back murder oh no it it definitely doesn't i think that they just want answers and i can't blame them for that i don't because i, don't I would either, want answers too i mean i i are i want answers and i'm i don't even unfortunately know this woman i mean she seems like she would have been phenomenal she seems like she would have been somebody that i would have wanted to be around probably because she just seems honestly pictures of her she just seems like she was so fun and outgoing and smiley and it she just seems like she would have been so fun to be around but Sometimes the people that seem the happiest are the ones that are truly the Oh, absolutely. Saddest. And it's horrible, but. Well, I don't know. The, to me right now, with all the evidence pre- presented, I'm going to stick with suicide just because there's nothing that, you know, nothing compelling that would change my mind on that. All right. Well, so, on that note. But I will give you that it is compelling. It is mysterious. I will take it. And that's the best you're going to get today. (laughs) I will take it. That was a compliment. So. Thank you all again, especially to all of our listeners across the entire like world because that's the coolest freaking thing ever um we very much appreciate you listening in 
Um, you can find links to all of our social medias below where you can like and follow and subscribe and all of that jazz. Uh, give us some ideas on our Facebook page. It would be great. So thanks for listening. And for everyone else, we're going to start putting questions up or a post up for questions and answers that we're going to start adding to the end of every episode. So if you ever have a question for one of us or anything, leave it on the post. As always, we keep you guessing.